Texas Tech was picked to place poorly in preseason pigskin prognostication. Few football forecasters figured the Red Raiders would fly to a fast 3-0 start. Several sports sages selected Baylor to stake claim to the Southwest sweepstakes. But a tough 0-2 road trip against top teams took its toll before the Bears could taste their initial triumph. Now, Texas Tech and Baylor can concentrate on conference challenges. Coming up next on Raycom Sports. Raycom Sports and Entertainment presents Southwest Conference Football. Today's game is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper Butlers. By Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. By British Airways. By Philip 66. And by GTE. On an absolutely gorgeous autumn afternoon on the banks of the grasses here in Waco. It's the traditional Southwest Conference opener between the 3-0 Texas Tech Red Raiders and the 1-2 homestanding Baylor Bears. And happy to have you with us again, Dave Barnett, along with Dave Rowe. The 3-0 Red Raiders right now, you have to say, rank as the surprise story in the Southwest Conference. They have done so by changing their offensive emphasis a little bit from last year. Not quite so much passing, a lot more running. Well, the name Tolliver sticks in your mind anytime you think of Texas Tech, but not this year. This year, they're running the football, and they're running with great success. James Gray, look at that statistic. Average 6.8 yards every time. He's been hurt, and he's been banged up with a bad shoulder, and Anthony Lynn has come in and played just a marvelous game. He has played very, very well, 4.6 yards per carry. He's got back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing efforts for Baylor. Offensively, when you talk about them, you usually talk about balance. They have an outstanding junior quarterback, and Brad Gable, by the time he is finished, will have every record they own. Oh, he certainly will. He is moving up on those marks, and look at his statistics there. 32 of 60. Not great statistics, and they have not been able to go downfield. That's something we're going to watch today to see if they can, are in fact, able to go downfield and get that deep thread. Defensively, last year, Baylor led the nation in pass defense. They're doing it again this year. Well, they are, but it's by a different reason a little bit. They're still a solid defensive unit, but they didn't have a pass thrown against them in the, in the Oklahoma game. But they have got to stop the run today. They know that. That's foremost in their minds. And they're going to do it with James Francis and Gary Joe Kinney. Of course, Francis is quite a specimen. He is an unbelievable football consensus All-American. Grant Taft says he's probably the best all-around athlete he has ever coached at the linebacker position. This has not been a good series to Texas Tech. They haven't won here since 1983. They've lost eight of the last ten, but they'll try to put an end to that streak today. And we return for the kickoff between the Red Raiders and Bears in just a moment. Welcome back to Floyd Casey Stadium here in Waco. This is Parents Weekend and an outstanding crowd making their way in. They expected between 30, 35,000, maybe upwards. And Spike Dykes has an unbeaten club, but he says they have to keep in mind their true abilities. Well, they just said, we just can't go down there thinking that we've hot stuff, we won some games, because they've been non-conference games. All these coaches realize the importance of the conference games, and he certainly does. Grant Taft says if you win this one, you're in great shape, and he's going to find out a lot about his team this afternoon. He certainly is. He's not pleased with the start, although they now they're in the conference play, and he also realizes this is a telltale day for them. Well, we told you the game conditions just about perfect. 72 degrees with a slight northwesterly breeze, and it probably won't get any higher than maybe 80 degrees as the afternoon wears on. Texas Tech won the toss and elected to defer, so Baylor will receive Trooper Taylor and Malcolm Frank waiting the kick from Lynn Elliott. This is a Baylor-dominated series, especially lately, although last year it was Baylor that came in with a 3-0 record, and they were trounced 36-6 in Lubbock. They were without Brad Gable in that game, however. They only managed two rushing yards, something that Grant Taft has drilled into their head all week. This return by Frank from the two. Make it Keith Caldwell, and he is filled at the 12-yard line. Then Kirkpatrick was there for the Red Raiders, and 
Baylor will set up deep in their own territory after the call well return. Brad Gable out of Quero. As a 6'4 junior, these numbers so far in 1989. Obviously, he'd like to cut back on the interceptions, bring the touchdowns up, and especially throw downfield better today. They have to have some kind of threat downfield. They've got to get someone in there that can get that 17 to 20 yard pass. With him in the backfield, Raphael Murray and the receivers, Frost, Anderson, and Stutzman. On play action, Gable with the cover forward ahead of his fullback, Jeffrey Murray. With the coverage by Sammy Walker. The men doing the blocking for Gable this afternoon. They feel they made a lot of progress in their big win over Kansas last week, and that's Gray, Turnpaw, Bass, Jones, and Vaspine. Not a lot in the way of a running game in their first two games, but if you go into Oklahoma to open the season and then you go the very next week between the Hedges and Georgia, it's pretty hard to imagine a tougher first two weeks. On the ground, this time, this is Raphael out across the 15 to the 17-yard line. And the nose guard, Troy Hennington, was there for the tackle. And let's look at who's along the 4-3 with Hennington. Up front, Washington Perry, Mathis Meyer. Perry has had an outstanding start this year. Weatherspoon, back as a starter this week. Wingo and Roll are the other linebackers. And the secondary, all sophomores with Dubisky, Walker, McFarland, and Bond. That has to be the most pleasant surprise for Spike Dykes because the reaction of sophomores in that secondary. Only one for Raphael, and from the tandem formation, the Bears look at third down and nine. And again, play action for David. Has Murray, and through his hands, and intercepted. This is McFarland. And a huge return for the Raiders to the seven-yard line. is a well-thrown ball. It has to be thrown over the coverage. Right there, you see the ball going over top of the coverage. Now watch when it hits his hands. He just he just bops the ball in the air. In the air. McFarland running back. Here's that hot call, and he picks it off in stride. That's why you try to teach all your defensive backs to converge on the football once it's thrown, just for plays like that. It's almost called a tip drill. It was tipped by Charles Will, the linebacker. So first and goal. And the Red Raiders... Well, Anthony Lynn, who has popped it right back up to Baylor. He hit in the middle of the hole. It might have been Francis in there, but it looked as if he jumped to get that extra yard. And I mean, he just stopped. It looked like he ran into a brick wall, and you can see the reaction of Spike Dykes. You do not want to give up an opportunity like that. Interesting that Lynn got the first carry. Watch close in this action. It's going right over the middle. Now watch who hits him. Right in here. Now watch right there. If that's Francis, boom, you can see that football coming out right there. And there's no, there's Francis going down on it. I don't believe it was Francis who made the hit. Santana Dotson. Left defensive tackle. Forced that fumble. They were in their short rotage offense with Shane Sears doing the blocking for Lynn, who popped it right back up to Baylor. And they breathe a little bit easier, although they were still very deep in their own end. Some breathing room up to the 14. All the way into the secondary, and Doug Bonds, the free safety, made the stop. What has Baylor got to keep in mind today? Well, first of all, Baylor has got to neutralize Tech's offensive line. They're, right now, they're on offense, so that's not a real key thing. Second thing is attack Tech's secondary. Tech's got those young four sophomores back there and avoid penalties. They've had 32 penalties in the first three games, and a lot of them are mental mistakes, so that's the things that they have to concentrate on to win. Eight yards for Raphael in second down and two. In motion is Reggie Miller. Raphael with another good hole right up the middle and a first down to the 26-yard line before Charles Perry was there for the stop make of the 21-yard line. And Baylor has opened up two nice holes for their fine tailback. Well, they're nice holes, but it takes good vision to see that hole. That hole is back against the grain. And when Raphael gets that ball and he starts to go to the strong side, he's cutting back against the grain. The hole is more diagonal than it is straight ahead. Taylor offsetting that eye. Murray taking a step to his left in what they call their tandem formation. 
And in motion is Lee Meyer. Once again, it's Raphael trying the middle, and this time Hennington was there to meet it. Also, Stefan Weatherspoon from the strong side linebacker spot. Early on, Notre Dame having no problems with Fred Akers, Purdue Boilermakers. That's a blowout if there ever was one. Of course, Clemson and Duke in that 7 0 Clemson. Alabama 3 0 over Vanderbilt. That's in the first period, but I think uh, Purdue's in for a long evening. Already. We'll really keep you up to date on our Dr. Pepper roundup throughout the afternoon. Lost of one, second half of the weather. line and gang tackled at that point. First man there was Sammy Walker. Hey Davis, we watch, we watch the pile get up and Raphael run back. A lot of criticism about him. Not the criticism that you would talk about as far as his running ability or his talents, but his size. He's six foot 178 pounds. You don't think of him as being, you know, he's not a big bruising back back there, but he's got great foot action. His feet are very close to the ground. He's got good vision in the hole, but he's a quality running back. Third down and six for the Baylor offense. Able to the sideline in triple coverage. Catch is made for a first down. Reggie Miller seemed to be surrounded. And Gable had radar on that ball in the first down. He certainly does. He drills a rope in here. Watch this. This is a straight line pass. It's the only way you're going to complete it. That ball has very little trajectory. See the three defensive players right around him? Boy, that's not a confidence builder for your quarterback early. Another smirk light in his size dimensions. 5'9 and 167. That ball is made to tackle. The Bears now marching from their 42. Side. Monty Jones and Larry Vaspine are clearing some room and Marcus Johnson Marcus Washington there to make the tackle for Texas Tech and the real strength of this Baylor uh, offensive line is really those three middle players at what turn Paul's 330 pass and he's an animal at 275 and of course Monty Jones at 292 Mike Bass is with the gear he, he really goes out of his way to look the part at center David Frost in motion this time. Raphael getting an early workout, and he's dragged out of bounds. Washington and Mike Derryberry as he got to the midfield stripe and also Charles Rowe. Well, speed will certainly make up for holes, and that time Raphael just, he just runs to the corner, and he gets outside, picks a nice yard, is going out wide. He just outran the defensive player. It wasn't a great block. Speed a lot of times will make up for that, uh, that just average block. New backfield is in, Eric Gilstrap and Lincoln Coleman on a short yardage situation, third down and two. This is Coleman and the first throw from Notre Dame leading forward to the first down at the 42-yard line before Barnes made the hit. Did you see that shift the power eye quickly? That's an interesting formation. There's very little guesswork which way that's going. What they do is they come out and line up, and then they shift to that power eye. That play has to go that way. It's going to be a run. That's something that Baylor has not shown a lot of, that shift quickly to that power eye. A wrinkle they have added. For the Texas Tech defense. Now Gilstrap and David Nims in the rapidly changing backfield behind Gable. Down to the 38-yard line. He's just a freshman, 5'9", and 176 pounds. He's coming off his best game, 85 yards last week on 17 carries, and those were both career highs. Michigan with an early start and a 7-0 lead against Maryland today. Half dozen running backs have come from Baylor into the NFL. getting the call and turning the corner to set up a third down and two from the 35 yard line. Well, there's a good example you said about the NFL running backs that have come out of Baylor. They're, they're all purpose backs. They block well, they catch well, and they teach them the entire game. You just don't, one guy's just not a carrying back and the other one comes in as a wide receiver. They're well-rounded backs. At that time there was a great block thrown up front to get Mims outside. 
Well, the NFL tells Grant Taft that that is why he has so many people in the loop. They come out as complete products. They can pass on the lock as well as kill. Where they mark him out, he has the first down to the 31 yard line. This home is just a shot. That average, 3.107 yards. This is the power eye. Maybe we can get a look at it here. This is power eye. See, everybody's to the left. There's no fooling around on this play. You have to get, it almost has to go that way. The only way it could go elsewhere is to have a counter play. Nice look there by, by Coleman going down the line to get that first down. Kept his feet in bounds and jumped ahead of the flag. Nice clearing block by Gilstrap. Wrapped up by Charles Perry at the 28. Charles Perry coming off a 15 tackle game. That was at Oklahoma State last week. Two weeks ago, he was the conference defensive player of the week. He the game saving tackle as New Mexico tried to tie it at the end. You can tell they're a solid front four. They've got 99 tackles between the four of them already coming into this game. Open intended receiver Melvin Bonner, a freshman from Van Vleck, who normally backs up Greg Anderson. The coverage was there by Charles Rowe, 38. And that is a ball, as you, and you can tell by the posture of Gable that he's upset about that. That's a ball you have to catch. Bonner, when he comes across here, he's got to catch this ball. I don't care where it's thrown, it's thrown close to him. Nobody around him. Look at that. He's just got to look that ball in and concentrate. That's one of the problems they've had going downfield is they have had inconsistency in drop the ball. Another touchy shoulder pads before his hands on time. So it's third down and seven. And from the rush. Is complete for a first down to the yard line. And that is Anderson. This is an outstanding drive. Very few times will you see an offense be able to drive the football all the way from the, what, three or four yard line, the length of the field. Gable avoids this pressure right there and gets outside. Gets under his poise, comes back to where this route was, and throws a strike right on the sideline. This is just a well, well run game. And from the 12, now first down and 10. in on the Texas Tech turnover after it looked like the Raiders would have the early lead at seven to nothing in favor of the Bears here at Floyd Casey Stadium. Baylor on top seven to nothing midway in the first quarter after their longest drive of the year. It really was. It was mixed up well. Good play selection. 14 plays, 94 yards. The big play part of that was the turnover, of course, that the defense gave the football. Island kicking into the breeze and angling it over the head of Travis Price as he returns from the seven. And up the sideline and out of bounds at the 18. Watch this bounce. This is not what you want to do. When you come up, you've got to play this ball in the air. He almost takes his eyes off to look at it. And you can see now that ball might have gone out of bounds. 
But then again, it might have stayed in bounds and been down. He had no choice on that, but you don't want to let that ball bounce like that. The sun could play a factor because it was right in his eyes. Wilfred Ellison bounced him out of bounds, and here's Jamie Gill bringing the Red Raiders up. They have had one play. Anthony Lynn fumbled to James Francis. Drove it deep. Open man is And already, with one pass, the Red Raider offense has outgained Kansas in terms of their passing <laughs> all afternoon last week. They got a total of seven passing yards in that 46-3 loss, along with Gill, Gray, and Winston, who has become their starting fullback in the last two weeks. Blackshear, back after he was hurt last week. Price and Sprinkles also will do the catching. With maybe the conference's best offensive line up front, led by Odio. <laughs> And leaning forward for the first is Anthony Lynn. And that's interesting. After we were told that James Gray was 100%, Anthony Lynn has started at tailback, and we're not sure why, but if we get any indication, we'll let you know. Defensively for Baylor, Jones, Dotson, Howard, and Godfrey. Dotson caused that fumble. Francis, Kinney, and Hafford, outstanding linebackers, and the best secondary in the country, Frank Bell, Blackman, and Welch. Primarily at the safeties. Yeah, really good. Gill airing it out, and that one's picked off by Blackman. It was between Rodney Blackshear and Anthony Lynn. They both went deep, and a nice over-the-shoulder interception by Robert Blackman, the senior from Van Gluck. Again, Blackman just looks this ball all the way in. It's thrown up high. He just runs underneath. We talked about, you said they have one of the finest secondaries. They really have great strength at their safeties in Blackman and Welch. Eighth career interception for Robert Blackman. Tex had the ball for four plays. On half of those, they have turned the ball over. And as we said at the outset, that's something they can't afford to do most days, and particularly today. Well, absolutely. We talked about the, the fact that they had coming into this game in just three games, had four turnovers, excuse me, four interceptions and five fumbles, and now they've already had one interception and one fumble already. It is Boston in motion and Gable from the 33-yard line with a pitch to Elvin Raphael. He's been a very busy man here in the first quarter. Out to the 37 before Charles Rowe, the weak side linebacker, out of Colleen Ellison near here, makes the tackle. Now's when you have to make defensive adjustments. You've had your defense on the sideline to talk with them. They take them over to the sideline. They bring the coaches over and say, okay, they're doing this to the line. They're doing this to the linebacker. Secondary, do this. And now you see those adjustments made as the game progresses. In this four yards. Made it again, say, after. That was for the safety valve. And Greg Anderson with the catch, but not where he needed to be for the first down. He's at the 41. It sets up third and two. Well, I thought that was a trap. That's what they thought. I saw the Tech players running over saying, no, he was trapped the ball. But I believe he got his arms underneath it. Greg Anderson's eighth catch of the year out of Odessa Permian. Very highly recruited when they got him some years ago. Baylor with a lot of big third down pickups on that 94-yard touchdown drive we just saw. And they've got another one that they need here from their 41. Third and two. And Gable will stop it right here. Not like the defensive alignment he saw from the Red Raiders. So he confers with Grant Taft in a 7 to nothing Baylor advantage. We've got 4.54 to play. First quarter here in Waco. British Airways, the world's favorite airline, is giving you the opportunity to win a free trip for two to London, England. To win, send a 3 by 5 postcard with your name and address to this address. Raycom at 801 East Trade Street, P.O. Box 33367, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28233. Entries must be postmarked by November 14th. I see that. I never win those things anyway. Don't worry about it. After the timeout, third and two for Baylor. His favorite receiver, and then Murray lost it out of bounds, but they rule it a completion and a first down. 
He had control before he was popped and fumbled it away, but a flag is down back at the 39, so we'll see if this one stands, and it won't. It looks as if it's going to be holding from where it's thrown. It's thrown back in where the pocket is. Looked like a couple guys from the tech squad had ripped up through the middle and got good penetration, may have gotten pulled down. In fact, they are there. They're talking with Mathis Meyer, so it's going to go against Baylor. I'll tell you, Baylor has not, I mean, uh, Tech has not recovered from that first period fumble. That just, that just takes all the wind out of your sails, to be honest. It just, it's just so hard. You've got so much exuberance, you've got so much excitement, and all of a sudden you turn the ball over, and by the time you get your breath back, Baylor has driven the length of the field and scored. Here's the Joe Thomas officiating crew today. Yeah, it's hard to imagine wind being taken out of one team's sails any quicker. Oh. Well, in a minute, in one minute, you're in the top of the world. You're excited. You're on the seven-yard line going in. The next play, you're right back out there as a defensive unit. After the markoff, third and 12 to go for the first. Gable looking for Frost and just out of his hands, but another flag is down, and we may have our second straight hold. And I think that was against Charles Perry. I saw Perry come in, and he just got tackled from the back side. He's got good, he's just got good strength in there, and it looked as if he was just running right down Gable's throat, and somebody dove out and just tackled him. Well, the Baylor offensive line did not start well, but we mentioned that had a lot to do with their competition at Oklahoma and Georgia. Last week, they thought they worked out the bugs. They had 26 first downs, only three points at Georgia. Last week, they had 24 first downs and 46 points for Grant Taft against Kansas. But they have struggled trying to make that third down, so now they look at fourth and 12. Well, a lot of it depends upon whether you're trying to win your conference or trying to win a lot of games. That's where you set your schedule up. And Coach Taft, he wants to win conference games. And Pete Rudder sails a beauty into the blues. Fumbled again, but the Raiders get it back. Tracy Saul almost looked at the third. Texas Tech turnover of the first quarter. Saul, a freshman out of Idaloo, Texas. So the Raiders will take over again. 4.31 to go in the period. Still down by a touchdown. Travel arranged through the NFL Citibank Visa card. Now carry the card of your favorite team and earn free NFL gear just for using it. Call 1-800-NFL-VISA today. Not much time to go in the first quarter, and Baylor on top 7 to nothing. Battle of turnovers so far, and you'd have to think this is a key series coming up from a mental standpoint for the Raiders. Absolutely. Not imperative that they drive length of field and score, but just that they get something going on offense so they get regain their confidence. You may see them go back to a lot of basic plays on this series. Well, we do see James Gray for the first time, and he gets the call. And again, just up to the 33-yard line, the original line of scrimmage or thereabouts, and John Godfrey made the tackle there. What do the Raiders have to keep in mind today? Well, first of all, play well on the road because last week's win was only the third in 12 games, and they've only won once in Waco. Run the ball successfully. They rank first and third. That's Gray and uh, Lynn. And, of course, eliminate turnovers. They have not done that so far. They've turned the ball over twice already. Texas Tech also using it from Baylor. Gray again. Maybe a yard. As they key on him, Santana Dotson leads the Baylor tackling contingent. Big sophomore out of Houston Yates. And one of the things that Grant Taft and his squad felt coming into this season is that, is that they needed more speed on their defense. So they really made a lot of changes. We had talked about them earlier, you and I, that they moved those linebackers to defensive ends. They moved the defensive back Hafford up to a linebacker spot. They've got a lot of speed. They make up for their size, lack of size, with speed. Grant Taft feels like he gained a step of speed at every defensive position with those changes. Gill going for Black Hughes. And finally ridden down at the 10 yard line. Rodney Blackshear had a step on Charles Bell. And when he let this pass go, I was watching the trajectory of the ball, and I didn't think it was a well thrown ball, but he threw it just about as far as he can throw. You'll see this when he drops back. Good play action into the line. This holds those linebackers. Now get back, set up, get square, and throw it just as hard as you can. And that's exactly what he did. There's the catch on the end there. Blackshear just looks it right in. 
Nice look in. He had to step, and he came down with a big reception. After Bruce Woods kept him out of the Oklahoma State game. Woods flying down near the five. Stopped at the seven by James Francis, who has clutched up so far twice now in that goal line territory with one fumble recovery and this big tackle of James Gray. It's going to be interesting to watch as Gray progresses through the afternoon because you know as well as I do, he has not played well against Baylor. That's a tribute to Baylor's defense, but he has just not had the outstanding days against this defense. In three games, a total of 71 career yards for him against the Bears. This time, first man through Winston. And he may not have cracked the five. Reggie Howard, the right defensive tackle. And one of those converted defensive ends that they moved the tackle trying to pick up that quickness, as you mentioned. Well, the Bears trying to keep a streak alive. That's quite a streak to go two and a half games. Their last 10 quarters, that's two and a half games, and they have only allowed one touchdown. That's good. And go back to the second half of the Oklahoma game, and they held them to only one field goal. Third down and five for Gary. Looking into the end zone. Sees Woods. And will it right to the lip of the cup. Did he get in? He did not. And maybe one foot shy of the goal line. We talked about a defensive secondary that converges on the football. I want to tell you something. Jamie Gill was running. He knew he was in the end zone. Now watch right here. Good scramble. He's going, he's looking weak side. There's nobody there. There's a little bit of pressure now. He's got, now watch this defensive close right here. You want to see what it's like? Boom, right there. And that just stops him right there. Good call by the official. Now watch, we're almost on the line here. See the official right there. There was some thought that the ball came loose, but there, the ball's down. Now it bounces out. That head linesman just about signal touchdown. And Blackman made the stop to his first down and goal. And his quick movement on the left side of the Red Raider offensive line. They may march backward. It looked like Nathan Richburg, the left guard. Oh, boy, you don't want to jump off. This is a mental mistake. We talked about limiting turnovers. Mental mistakes like this, an illegal motion, this is just foolish. What he's going to do is he's going to go on quick count. You see there to the left, that's Richburg firing off sides. What happened is a defensive player came up and yelled out something, you know, like an audible for a defense, and it drew the offense offside. Boy, there's, uh, there's some real concern on Spike Dykes. You can see the, the, the picture on his face. That's frustration. You cannot get down here and not score. You've got to get in there. Back him up now, and just across the five-yard line for the first time in the world. Charles Odeorn and the clearing fullback Shane Sears clearing the way for James Gray. And now Lynn Elliott out of the hole to Jamie Simmons to tie the game at seven. That touchdown, by the way, has made James Gray the all-time leading scorer in Texas Tech school history by one point over the former kid of Scott Sears. This is just schoolyard left. Everybody in the hole. The team is just running that way, and all you do is you're trying to roll them in. That's a nice block there for the upback coming in there. Just to roll them out. Just get out there in front of them and let Gray do his thing. He just puts his shoulder down right here, and boom, just rolls into the end zone. Gray has got that knack of just finding that little crevice in there, that little crack. That block you're talking about, Shane Sears against Blackman, who had in mind to do the same yeah. thing he did to Jamie Gill. Not able to here. So we're down inside of a minute. Texas Tech cashing in on their second big scoring opportunity of the day. Dr. Pepper roundup now 34-0 for the Irish at halftime. Clemson by 14 also at the half in Alabama, opening it up early against Vanderbilt. Gosh, those are some pretty impressive scores. 34-17 and 14 at half. Ouch. Notre Dame apparently at this point had a, had a very possible second three. Get the 
corner and ridden out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Mike Lissio, the son of former Dallas Cowboy offensive lineman Tony Lissio, with the tackle on Taylor. Had a lot more speed than Tony had. <laughs> He's down there covering kickoffs. Well, the drive for the Red Raiders culminated in that James Gray record setting touchdown with seven plays and 69 yards in just over three and a half minutes. And officially six yards on the Gray score. Ties it at seven with 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oldwin Raphael tripped up. And I bet his eyes were as wide as they can get when he first saw that line. It was a big hole that Tom Mathismeyer denied him. Yeah, he did. There was a big hole there to start, and all of a sudden it just closed. You've got to pick your feet up when you get through this hole. Now watch right here. Right in. There's the hole. Now get your feet up, and he just, Mathismeyer just reaches up and just grabs him and yanks him down. It's a solid play by a solid defensive end. He's coming off a big game. A dozen tackles and two sacks at Stillwater last week. Maybe the last throw of the first quarter. Denies him at the 25. That is absolutely the exact way that a defense has to work. The linebacker took out the, the took out the defensive, I mean the offensive tackle. The, the backer came up inside, took out the blocking back, and then all of a sudden the corner stand there to make the tackle. That's exactly like you draw it on the board. We're done with one quarter at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. 7-7, back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Hey, David. Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe back at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Second quarter will open with the Bears looking at a third down and seven at a tie game. Seven to seven, Baylor marched 94 yards after an Anthony Lynn fumble, which followed in turn a David McFarland Red Raider interception. Then the Raiders got a six-yard scoring run from James Gray to tie it. And here the Bears on third and seven. just ran a fly pattern which is just straight down the field as hard as you can run and throw it up and see if he can run underneath it. Ireland now two for two on the extra points and Gable let that one fly right at the point where he was wiped out. You cannot throw it any better on the front. And he waited there. He saw the blitz up in the front. Now watch the blitz. See there? There's uh, Charles Rowe blasting up in there. And all of a sudden he just throws it up just as hard as he can. This is just a fly straight down the field. And Anderson just gets the better, better of it. He just jumps up and just catches the ball, just brings it right down in. Good concentration on his part. And it's a touchdown. But Gable took a long time to make that call. There's the ball in the air. Now watch the leap right here. Anderson just gets the better of the leap. The defender was right there. But Anderson goes up and brings that ball down. Good concentration, as I said, on his part. And it all adds up to a 75 yard score. Hey, 
today. He just uh, reached another run. He's now up to third all the time. On the Baylor passing yardage list for his career. He's passed two people already today. 14 to 7 after the quick strike on third down on the first play of the second quarter. Kickoff return coverage has been outstanding by both teams today. This tackle by Lachey Maston for Baylor. After a three play, 78 yard scoring drive. After one quarter, Texas Tech not able to do all that much on the ground. But out throwing Baylor. That's 181 yards now, I think, isn't it? For after that first play in the second quarter. Yeah, that'll turn it around. 75 yards. So again, emotionally, a difficult hole for the Red Raiders to climb out of. Right after they have finally pulled This is a screen to the to the right of your screen here. And right there, see you see there is the, the hand of Marcus Lowe goes up. Long comes across, catches the ball, and now they are back in scoring position. Boy, it has been. It's been a lot of turnover so far. Garrett Long at defensive end, a former strong safety, if you can believe that, back at Cisco Junior College. Well, he's one of those players that they brought in for that speed. You bring him in there to try to get that speed, utilize that speed, and did just a great job on that play. And Baylor now set up to take full control of this game. First down, goal to go from the 10. Raphael gets no win. Raiders were waiting for him, and in particular Marcus Washington, the left defensive end, third leading tackler on that defensive unit. As we mentioned, a lot of milestones falling for Brad Gable, and only Neil Jeffrey. Quarterback of that miracle on the brasses team in 74 and Cody Carlson now with the Houston Oilers are still ahead of him. This year, Raphael turning down to the seven. Charles Perry with the tackle. And now third down and goal. What possibilities do you look for here? Well, what you want to do if you're a defensive team, what you don't have to cover deep. It's going to be, it should be a passing play, something that'll give you an option run pass play. But what you want to do is you want to use that that the end zone as an extra defensive player. Cover them a little bit tighter. Don't allow the crossing pattern to take it away from your defense. This is a perfect position to be in. Hold them to a field goal. At Anderson and Miles wide left. Gable looking that way. Going for Anderson. Bounced it in. Under threw it against good coverage from Sammy Walker. They put a lot of pressure on him that time. They blitzed and Weatherspoon came and just leveled Gable on that play. Texas Tech electing to blitz on that play. When I say you use the secondary, Dave, what you do is you just, you don't have to worry about anything deep, so you cover them a little bit tighter, thinking that there's no way they're going to catch a ball behind you. And they did it very well on that play. He stopped defensively for Tech. Ireland is 2 of 3 this year. Longest only 32. Career, he is 8 of 19. On field goal oh, attempts, and this one, 24 yards, is perfect. So the Bears don't get what they want, but they will settle for the field goal. And now a 10-point advantage as we play early in the second quarter. 17-7, Baylor. We'll see the Bear offensive unit again from their 20-yard line. Very opportunistic so far this afternoon, cashing in three Red Raider turnovers for 10 of those 17 points. At one and two, they came in, as they always do in this series with the Red Raiders, knowing that one win puts them in the driver's seat in the conference race, one loss, and their backs are firmly up against the wall. This is as tough a conference opener as anybody in the league faces year in, year out. Elvin Raphael twisting and cutting up to the 23-yard line. Charles Perry with the tackle. 
Interesting when you look at the comparisons physically up front for the two lines. There's Baylor's offensive line. Baylor's offensive line is 290. Texas Tech at 248. That's the defense. They play against each other. Conversely, Tech's offense at 273, the defense. That's not a big difference, but look at the difference between the offensive line of Baylor and Texas Tech. With a 330-pound turn ball up front, it really tilts the scales to the goal. Again, he is blasted by Wingo at the 25. Lean forward to the 27. Also, Marcus Washington with a big hit. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Bears third and three at their own 27-yard line. Gable may be checking off. He gets Raphael behind him, and they're at Gilstrap. Slot right. Raphael, the man the ball. And a first down pickup to the 35. Matt Wingo with the tackle, the strong side linebacker. Big gainer for Raphael on third down. You called it early. It's a checkoff. They swing Raphael out of the backfield. Let him pick up those big offensive linemen and just find his hole, put his head down, don't fumble. But they give Gable a lot of control out there in the offense. He's allowed to call a lot of his plays. A lot of times he'll walk up to the line of scrimmage and see something and call an audible. Might have done it there. This is Gilstrap, his first carry of the day. Doesn't go very far. Another Wingo tackle. Gilstrap, the blocking specialist, who Grant Taft says last week blocked better than anyone they've had in three years here at Baylor, and they went over Kansas. Well, the telltale sign on whether a quarterback is calling an audible is when he comes up to the line. Instead of just going through his normal cadence and sticking his hands under, he turns and yells to both sides and turns and looks at one of his backs. That's when you know it's an audible. shift by Gil Strat, who may have thought he heard something that Gable didn't say. What they did, you, <laughs> I could see him, he's yelling over the side, Gil Strat was yelling over the sideline. He called 46, and that meant that he was coming in motion. Unfortunately, he was so far out, he didn't hear what the play was. Watch the right guard, he may have flinched also there. That's Jones, right, right there, you see there's, that's actually also, that's an offside in addition to the uh, motion. They have two men in motion on that play. Marching back now second down and 14 for Grant Taft in his 18th year here in Waco. should not be a completion if you're a Texas Tech player because the safety has got to come over. McFarland has got to play this ball stronger to knock it out. But I think what he does is just about knocks the ball back into Murray. Watch right here. See, he just about pushes the ball right back into his chest. But gosh, that really was. That was great concentration. To come across that middle, and Murray Shoney has good hands. He's got 16 catches coming into the game. He's their leading receiver as a fullback. Lee Miles. to the 37 yard line that big hand went up for the clearing block by Terry Gray the left tackle. It's a completely legal block. I think it was on Mathis Meyer. He turns and picks him up. And when Mathis Meyer turns to come back, you'll see Gray just wheels on him. Now Gray will be to the right of your screen. Let's see right here. Right now watch Gray. He's going to turn back. There's Mathis Meyer. Now watch this block. Boom. That's very legal. It's a clean block. He could have cut him, but he did not. He hit him up high, and that's that's just the mark of a good football player. To hit him up high, he blocked him, and that just probably just knocked the air out of him. We don't want to speculate on it, but most times that'll just knock the air out because he never saw it coming. He was running full speed and just took the shot in the upper chest. That's got to be like running with a blindfold into a telephone pole. <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. As they check on Mathis Meyer, here's our situation getting late in the first half. 
Now this is that play by Terry Gray when he peels back. Now watch Mathismeyer. He just gets hit. I want to emphasize two things. Gray does a good job peeling back. That's what he's supposed to do. But let me emphasize that he hit him up high, perfectly legal. It's legal to hit him anywhere on that block, but he just takes him right out of play. There's Mathismeyer in the sidelines. Obviously he just got the air knocked at him. I would be I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he just doesn't come right back next play. And a nice gesture by Brad Gable and Jeff Murray. They went over to him once he made it to his feet and made sure he was okay and encouraged him. The second down is three. High load by Weatherspoon first and Dubisky second. Well, and that's what Tech does so well. When you try to get wide on them, they get everybody out there. I was watching Prime McFarland on that. He just threw off his defensive player. But look the way they're just stringing it out. See, they've got inside and outside force. There's no place to go. That corner gets up on the outside. That's Dubisky. He has to turn it back inside. Then you get McFarland, Bonds, plus Wingo, the linebacker coming in there. That's just the way you draw it on the chalkboard. Touchdown on the first down to the 28. He showed some hands. He had to try and run and lean and juggle all at the same time. And was in his third reception of the year. Well, this is good concentration. Stutzman coming into this game only had two catches. And they had tight end had not been a big factor in the game. But watch this. Just, just takes the time, just finally comes up with the handle and picks up the first down. That is a big play. And Stutzman is known for those hands. He has great big hands when he comes off the line. Mathis Meyer wraps him up at the 25. He had the big early yardage through the middle, and the Red Raiders have made some adjustments. And the going has been much tougher since his first couple of series. One of the things I get the feeling as I watch this is that Baylor is playing absolutely perfect football. You know, they have made so many mental mistakes coming into this game. Uh, they had made a lot of mental mistakes and had a lot of penalties and just a lot of things. They, they were offside four times last week. And today, twice as many offensive snaps as you just saw. Murray looking like a halfback option. Incomplete intended for Reggie Miller. Flag down. Look for pass interference on Sammy Walker. Reggie Miller has not caught a ball all year, but they tried to find him in the end zone on the left-handed Jeffrey Murray halfback option play, fullback option in this case. Murray certainly left-handed was the perfect call to run that reverse towards his left so he doesn't have to throw running the opposite way, and he just really threw the ball well. It didn't fool the defensive back, but Walker made a critical mistake on the tail end of it. He didn't look back for the ball. Now, this is pass all the way. Now watch Walker on the tail end. See, he doesn't look back for the ball. See, he face guards, puts his hand up in the face of the receiver. Here's the tail end of it again. See right there, you've got to look back. If not, you're face guarding. Miles is another one that you may see try that option going to his left. He's another left-handed former quarterback. They've got him wide right now in motion. First down, 11-yard line. Raphael, one yard, no more. He was greeted by Charles Perry, who plays his best football the closer you get to backing him up to his own goal line. Doesn't he? Well, he's a very intense player, very strong and very steady in there. You know, they really had a real a real brawl last year. I think Turnpaul and Monty Jones were somewhat embarrassed last year. They both went in there as freshmen, and Charles Perry just did a job on them, and they just dedicated themselves, saying, we're going to do something Charles Perry today because he's such a fine football player. He was definitely an early all Southwest Conference candidate. Gable into the end zone and incomplete. Good coverage that time by Walker on Greg Anderson. Now there's the difference on what Walker did that time in the play before. This time he doesn't put his hands up in the face of the receiver. And this is just a timing pattern. Now watch his hands. He guards him and he's running and he watches the eyes and just rip the ball out. You see that? He concentrates on as soon as the hands got on the ball, just concentrates and rips it away. That's a fine football play there by Sam Walker. There is now third down and nine. He leads a one for the first down. Brian Dubisky, the left quarterback, again intended for Greg Anderson, and the Red Raider defense is held. Boy, 
the, oh, this is the difference between winning and losing football games and, and its effort, like Dubisky did that time. When the receiver comes on this out pander, and that's Anderson. Watch this. He's going to curl back out and come back. Now watch Dubisky lay out, just get a hand in there, right there, and knock that ball. That is a well thrown ball, too. That's right where it should be. Dubisky had four receptions at Oklahoma State last week for Ireland. A 27 yarder. And the Baylor margin stretched to 13. Judge likes what he sees. And it is part of the seven in favor of the home center, Baylor Bay. Baylor has had much the better of it here at home in this series. They haven't lost in this building to the Red Raiders since 1983 and after it was tied at seven through one quarter they have dominated here in the second. There's still four minutes and 20 seconds to go. Jeff Taylor set to kick it back over to Tech. And his best kick of the day taken by Travis Price. Oh, now dragged down at the 27 yard line. But a flag is down. I think it was made by Daniel Morgan who came to the game. You can ask a lot more as we wait for the call. It's going to be a clip call against Texas Tech. I don't think you can ask any more of their defense than what they're playing. They've stopped them now twice inside the 10 yard and uh, 10 yard line and held Baylor to two field goals. And that's something that Tech has done so very well this season. On the Dr. Pepper roundup, now 34 nothing for Notre Dame in the third. Duke has come back against Clemson also in the third and Alabama is still 17 at halftime over Vanderbilt. And more now 28 to 7 for the Wolverines still in the first half. But Baylor on the other side of the stick if you talk about both sides of this Baylor has certainly has capitalized on the opportunities they've gotten. I think back to that one where Texas Tech had the ball on the seven yard line and fumbles it right back. Well that's something that you just can't allow it happen. And if you don't do that at home, take advantage of what is given you. You are really clearing block. Anthony Lynn out to the 11 yard line as he and James Gray continue to alternate. Lynn actually got the start again they today. Very Joe Kenny, Reggie Anthony Howard Lynn. made the tackle. As a backup, this is interesting for Lynn. Backing up James Gray, he is in the top 20 rushers in the country with his back to back 100 yard efforts. And he's only a sophomore. <laughs> Got a long time to play. At Salina High School, nearly 5,600 yards, 68 touchdowns. Pick up for Lynn this time up to the 16, and again Kenny filling the middle for the stop. And Lynn reminds me a lot of Raphael's the same style running those quick feet into the hole. They they don't just seem to lumber up there. James Gray seems like he lumbers a little bit, but he makes people miss. But Raphael and Lynn both have that ability. They just kind of scamper back there. They get the real fast feet and just find a hole and get through. Big play for the Raider offense. Trying to get something established on third and one. Someone has the throw, and Gary Joe Kenny makes his third straight tackle. He was a one man defensive force on that series. Interesting, almost as if they thought it was going to be a blitz. What I mean, thought it was going to be a pass. Because look at T Kenny. All of a sudden, he's left alone and says, "Hey, I'm just coming in there." And Guild has nowhere to go, and he goes down. He was sliding along there, waiting to pick up, but just read the play well, just slid right in the hole and made the tackle. In his end zone, Jamie Simmons. Nice high wobbly spiral. And Frank lets it bounce and takes a Red Raider roll. Up near midfield. Playing the field position game, also a big help for Baylor. They take over in Red Raider territory, 48 yard line. I want to make a point here. Uh, Grant Taff was telling me that, of course, as Gable moves up, he's going to move ahead of Neil Jeffrey. And Grant wanted to make sure that he said hello to James Jeffrey, who was Neil Jeffrey's father. Of course, you remember the great Jeffrey brothers that played here. Neil on the 74 team and wasn't. Uh, Jay and 80. Jay and 80. And of course, James Jeffrey. Quite a friend of Grant Taft. He said, Grant said, tell him I send my prayers and best wishes. His offense 
Wide receivers both on the left side. And the play action for Gable. The Baylor offense wanted to throw downfield better today, and they have done that. That has been the biggest criticism in these first games is that Baylor has not been able to attack downfield. They've run a lot of swing passes. Murray had 16 passes coming into this game, and now Gable is just, I mean, he's throwing them down, and they're just making circus catches out there. Frost, we've seen it. Anderson make that big, long catch. Dutchman made a great catch. Oh, that's out of bounds for Greg Anderson. We were talking. We were talking to the coaching staff. They said they had five drops last week. Where I mean, just hit the player and he just dropped it. They haven't dropped anything this week. <laughs> and as a result, Gable continues up the ladder. He is past Neil Jeffrey. And it'll be a while before he gets Carlson. But if he stays healthy, he will get it. This year, probably. <laughs> probably so. Mr. Junior from Quero, a lot of great talent off the Dobbler's high school team, including Robert Strait, who called him with a redshirt this year. Again into the end zone, off the hands of Lee Miles, who had to do some leaping at just 5'7". I thought the Bisky might have touched that football in the end zone. Looked as if it, as he just judged it just perfect and got a hand on it. Maybe we can see this in the end zone. Well, after this ball, yeah, here we go. Let's see if Dubisky gets a hand on this right here. And there's the hand. Third down, ten. They can make a first down without a touchdown. Anderson at the four. He needed the one. So again, the Texas Tech defense forcing Baylor to think field goal. But the fans wanted to think otherwise, and Grant Half has called timeout, so they may not automatically kick the field. Well, he had, what he's thinking of right now with the score being, it'll be 23 to 7. Then you're two solid touchdowns ahead plus points. If you go for it, it'd be 27 to 7. And that's his decision right now. If even if he doesn't make it, he'll have Texas Tech in great field position for his defense to come on and hold him. It's a long way to drive. You don't see teams drive 95, 96 yards very often. That's the decision that he and his staff are starting to make right there. Lou Holtz had a great quote about Grant Taff. He says, not very many people could coach as successfully at Baylor University as Grant Taff has, but Grant Taff could coach anywhere. And he has had opportunities to go places like USC and LSU and Florida State. And he says, I can accomplish my goals right here. I'm not interested in leaving. I'd like to stay about 10 more years. And you know what he said to me last night? He said, during, when he was a kid, he said, I dreamt of coaching at Texas Tech. He's he said, from Snyder out there. <laughs> he said, that was my dream. He said, and I've had a chance to go back several years ago, but I never really got that, that opportunity. I never really wanted to take advantage of that opportunity. He came close, though. He married an ex-Texas Tech cheerleader. <laughs> well, the decision has been made to try for the point, maybe. Now, they also have a fake field goal play in the game plan for this week. And the holder is a quarterback, a high school quarterback. Kent Brentham. 21-yard attempt is up by Ireland and is good. Tap deciding to take the points. Really continuing to do a great job cashing in on their opportunities. And that's, and that's a wise play. It was... It's, I want to just make a couple more, uh, just a couple thoughts about that. First of all, he called a timeout because he's got the timeouts. He's got a minute and a half left. You don't want to hustle and make a mistake in that situation. So you call a timeout. You think about it, discuss it with your staff, and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. The first thing went through their mind is if we score three points, then we're up by 16 points, and that's two eight-point touchdowns, and that's tough to do. That was what his decision was. That's just that's solid coaching when you when you don't make mistakes in in haste just trying to get something going quickly. So 23 to 7. And so far today is keeping pace with the rivalry. It's hard to put your finger on why but the last time these two teams played a closer game than nine points was seven years ago and Baylor won by only one. Normally there's pretty good parity between these programs but not when they play each other. The average margin 22 points over the last does not even get the 10 yard line. Trooper Taylor and Daniel Morgan.
Now we talked about the struggle that James Gray usually has against the Baylor defense. A total of 71 career yards in three previous meetings. Yes, there it is. Look at that. Two and a half yards per carry. That's certainly not even near his range. This year he's averaging 6.8 coming into this game. Today he has carried six times. A total of 23 yards. New quarterback Jason Rattan seeing his first action. Out of Eastland. James Gray had a trademark weaving ability, and he's up to the 16. Robin Jones made the tackle. And I think the thing that, as we look at Rattan, just a sophomore, six foot, 200, foot, uh, 200 pounds from Eastland. But as we watch Gray run, he has that ability just to set up those blockers and just allow that blocker to get that angle, and then he makes the cut off whichever way the blocker breaks and. He really does a good job of finding that hole. All time ground gainer and scorer in tech history. And not much here. Maybe the line of scrimmage. Reggie Howard, right defensive tackle. And John Godfrey, the end on that side. Made the stop. 47 seconds in the half. And another Baylor timeout. They want to try and get the ball back one more time, so they have used their final timeout of the half. Oklahoma up early at Kansas by 14. And you you aptly said what was going on right now in Baylor's mind is that if you're able to hold them here and they get the ball you can put a strong rush on perhaps get a blocked punt if you don't get the blocked punt he's punting into the he's, he's punting deep in his own territory they may get the ball back and and their kicker has certainly has a good leg he can reach out there from 50 yards so now, elsewhere today Houston's going for a thousand total yards and only one team <laughs> in the country that I can think of could even think about that. But they set the big record against Arizona State last week. Also, Southern Miss off a two-point loss at TCU at A&M. Penn State and Texas, two programs trying to get back to where they usually are. UTEP at Arkansas. That's David Lee, the former Arkansas assistant, bringing the Miners in. And SMU-TCU in another head-to-head -head conference showdown. And there is Rattan, who started last week and then was relieved by Gill. But the reviews on Rattan were very good. He was 6 of 10. 93 yards and a touchdown. Third down and four. James Gray. Flag down. First down and out of bounds, but we'll see if this one counts with 40 seconds. Well, Gray made such a nice dip into the line. He dipped into the line and it froze the linebacker coming up and then just circled back outside and has that speed to get outside. But I think it may all go for naught. There was a flag thrown on the back side of the play and it may be holding. That's what it is. You haven't been wrong yet this year. No. When a flag is thrown by that official, there's only two or three calls that it can be in there. It can be a holding call. It can be a motion call. But mostly on that play, when especially when you've seen it thrown on the back side of the play, it's usually someone that's just reaching out and tackling somebody, trying to keep them pursuing to the play. They will take it, of course, and march them back to the eight and a half yard line, but it cost seven seconds that much less for Baylor to work with if they can hold him again here what you want to do on this play is you've got to bring the ball back and you've got to throw a strike out near the 25 to 30 yard line to get enough yardage for that first down it's got to be a strike I'd look for a crossing pattern maybe something with a little bit of a roll that will give you a run play option but you, can't, you just can't be conservative in this situation Aaron Hooper is to the right and Travis Price to the left on third and 12. And Rattan with nowhere to go. Out of bounds to set up the kicking situation. Chased there by Kinney. And Rattan very mobile. Very good all-around athlete. That's the one where you wish you could, wish you could yell to your quarterback, stop and throw it. <laughs> throw it downfield. Don't go out of bounds. Stops the clock and they don't have to use the timeout. Baylor should get excellent field position. They should get the ball inside the 50-yard line as we see Jamie Simmons setting up from deep in his end zone. Going to back Lee Miles up to his 46 yard line. Big hit again by Brian Gerlich, who's had two good special team stops for Texas Tech. But the field position is there from the 47 for Baylor in 25 seconds for them to work with. Here's the hit again. That's a good solid hit. Young people out there that want to learn how to tackle, that's the way you do it. Wrap those arms around them, 
put your face mask on the numbers. That's all the things that coaches teach. Watching Lee Miles yesterday without pads working out. 5'7, 155. He looks absolutely brittle. <laughs> you just you almost feel that punch with him when he gets popped. Gable with all day. Steve Stutzman is inside the 30 and 17 seconds to go, but remember, Baylor is out of timeouts. Ireland has tried a 55 yard field goal, so they're well within his range. From the 28, clock rolls, 13 seconds for Gable. And out of the backfield is Murray, and wisely steps out of bounds at the 22. This with nine seconds remaining, so now they will decide to go ahead and get the field goal unit in. Well, that is absolutely perfectly executed. And what's impressed me most about Gable is that he's leading on the run. I saw that time when he ran out in the pattern, he waved at his back to go get over towards the sideline and completed it. Now the wind has shifted just a bit. And it looks like he may be slightly kicking into it from 40 yards. He's got enough leg, but he left it well off wide to the right. And still three seconds to go. So they did manage to set him up with the opportunity. And it would appear that the Bears will have to settle for their 16-point halftime lead. We look at both bands coming up at halftime. Check all the statistics. And take a look at both campuses. You know, as we look at the score, 23 to 7, you'd think, well, one team's blowing out the other team. But I can tell you, this Tech team, they epitomize their coach. There's no quitting these young men. They will not quit out there. Before Blackman brings him down at the 33, and that'll do it for the first half. Today's game is brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, by British Airways. By Budweiser. And by Philip 66. It's halftime, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe back in Waco. 23 to 7 Baylor, 16 unanswered. Second quarter points opening up. That big advantage, they will have to kick off to the Raiders, who won the opening toss and deferred to the second half. And obviously, they need the ball, and they need to get something rolling on the offensive side. They have balance uh, offensively, but not enough of either the running or the passing. And as we have mentioned throughout, too many mistakes when you're playing on the road against a talented team like Baylor. I think those, those two losses that, that Baylor suffered early were not indicative of the quality of team that they have. A lot of people thought that they would challenge in the Southwest Conference in the title, and uh, they certainly are proving that they are a talented team. Now, if you're Texas Tech and you're coming out of the locker room, what you've done is you've talked. They've talked about it. They told them what they have to do. Now they just have to go out and execute. If you're Baylor and you come out of the locker room, what they've told is whatever you're doing, keep doing it because you're doing it right. We're very opportunistic. We've capitalized on a lot of mistakes. We want to keep that same exuberance, that same momentum. McAfee was to the left and twice to the right. There's Jeff Ireland who had a busy first half. Points and three field goals. A lot of height, not that much distance. Price from his 11. Michael tackle is made at the 24-yard line, and Daniel Morgan has three of those in special team situations. We saw J.C. Rattan lead in the first half at quarterback, and we'll see who comes out to lead the Texas Tech offense here in the start of the second half. The musts, when we go back to talking about the Red Raiders so far, they they really haven't done any of the three. No, they have not played well on the road. They're not running the ball successfully, and they have already have several turnovers, so they have not done what they have to do to win. Now they have a second half to which to make up. He does remain the quarterback, and Anthony Lynn, as he's in the first half, the eye-back position, and look at him go. 
Very persistent run. He's knocked down by James Francis, who had the early fumble recovery for the Baylor defense. And immediately looking at this play, you're thinking that what Tech saw is they said, Baylor is starting to overplay the ball, so cut back against the grain, but he makes a nice run. He breaks a tackle there. He leaves three or four green shirts just grasping for air. You can see him. He almost breaks that thing all the way. Nice run. Really nudged down by Francis. Line of nine yards. Lifton Winston leans forward, has the first, out across the 35. And Santana Dotson, who paused that first play fumble, back in the first quarter, makes the tackle. And Dave, in this situation, a lot of coaches will go back to the basics. They'll go back to the power football, where it's just man on man. Use that big offensive line that Tech has. See if you can drive the ball and get some of the momentum and get the crowd back out of this football game and take control of it. On the option, return the delay pitch to win. He's wrapped up by Blackman. Excellent open field tackling in the 40. There's no substitute for speed, and that's what Blackman has back there. He just plays that ball as well as you can. Holds it to about a four-yard gain, but it is just a well-run play. That option puts so much pressure on that safety because if he doesn't get there and make that tackle, then Lynn takes it around the corner and he's down the sideline because there's no one else out there. Blackman missed about half of last year with a shoulder problem. He was still the second leading tackler among all their defensive backs. Oh! Rattan chased by Robin Jones, and he'll run it, and Gary Joe Kenny knocks him out of bounds at the 43. And that sets up third down and a long four. Well, Rattan, who started last week, one relieved by Gill, and they reversed that process this week. Other scores. Now 40 to nothing for the Irish, and they can pretty much name their score today. Clemson with the field goal, now with that slim three-point lead over Duke in the ACC. Alabama by 20. Michigan, Oklahoma, also up, and Auburn and Tennessee are underway. I'm not sure. Anthony Lynn will have first down yardage and almost was able to burst free and get a long gainer. Francis just able to trip him up. Well, that's the difference between a 50-yard run and about a 7- or 8-yard run. It's just a shoestring here. You can see Lynn just burst through the hole. Good technique. Gets the legs up there, comes off that play, and just about breaks that thing. He's almost off for a long gainer. We've talked about how most coaches don't want you to just bump guys. They want you to wrap, them, wrap up. them up. Francis, one of the few who appears to be strong enough to bump him and get away with it. Well, he's still taught to wrap him up, get those hands around him. Yeah, one more time. And in a world of trouble as soon as he got the handoff, and Francis was right there along with Kenny. But you see the type of drive this is. Tech has obviously decided to go back to what they do best. That's control the football via the run. Use those big linemen up front, Webb, Hurst, Wright, Richburg, and, of course, Odeorn. Use them to drive off the football. Use the strength that they have in both Gray and Lynn. They just, that's what they do best, and that's what they have to do. They're trying to take the momentum back and take control of this football. After that loss of two, Gray back in for Lynn. Over the hands of Kevin Sprinkles, his tight end, who was open. Oh, boy. And Sprinkles open on that play, and Rattan would love to have that one back. He was under a lot of pressure. The left end made a good move. He jumped over top of the blocker and came back around. I think it was Robin Jones on that play and put pressure on him. But Rattan should have delivered a strike on that ball, and there's a man who knows it the best. Spike, third year at Texas Tech, and he's compiled a nice team. No one really expected him to challenge this year. Talked about how Taft always wanted to be a college head coach. Spike Dykes born across the street from Jones Stadium. Something like destiny in there, perhaps. Rattan down underneath the rush of Robin Jones. A lot of pressure on him. They did a twist in the middle. A twist means that your two defensive tackles go one way, and the end comes back and loops underneath, and it just collapsed the pocket around Rattan. He had no place to step up. So Jamie Simmons, nice long one. Anderson back out of the 
Popped at that point by Jeff Holm, 23 to 7, Baylor early on in the second half. Bears will take it on offense for the first time here in the second half. Back to what we said before they uh, got underway today. They had to do, and so far you have to say they're three for three. Oh, they certainly are. They have neutralized Tech's great size advantage. They've been able to attack the secondary with those long passes, and they've avoided the mistakes and penalties that have happened in the first three games. David Frost in motion. He had a long in the first half. Elmer Raphael with second and then third effort. For about four yards. Yeah, it looks like just a simple play running in there, but any coach will tell a running back, don't let your feet stop. And that's what Raphael does so well. When he gets in that hole, those feet are just pumping as he gets up in there. He gets hit and he just keeps his feet pumping. And there you see him running. <laughs> There they're bringing up water from across the street, we understand. There is a water pressure problem here in Floyd Casey State. Very little across the street and then run all the water back. Raphael wrapped up behind the line. Troy Hennington, the nose guard, had the early penetration. Boy, nice play there by Hennington to play across the face of the center. And he comes from the backside, and as soon as Raphael turns around, look what he looks at. Boom, number 94, Hennington. Out of Fort Collins, Colorado, one of only three non-Texans on the Red Raider roster. Homegrown team for Spike Dykes, looking at third down and nine. Raphael from Lawton, Oklahoma, one of the three non-Texans for Baylor. He'll take the swing pass out of the backfield, juggles, catches ahead of Mathis Meyer, who it may have appeared might have grabbed the face mask, but an official was right there and said, no, he got him on the shoulder pad, but still shy of what he needed for the I, first. I thought it was face mask at first, but the official was right there to see it. And watch, see if he doesn't grab the shoulder pad right there, and that little tiny bit. That's just a perfect picture. You can't get any better picture than that. Our producer, David Handler, director Johnny Tice, right on it. And on fourth and one, Pete Rudder, who has not been very busy today, Sends it down to Brian Dubisky. So nine and a half minutes to go now in the third quarter. And after an exchange of punts, Texas Tech again trying to come from behind. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Still Jason Rattan in charge for the Red Raider offense. First down to 10, they take over the 31 yard line. Send Lewis Sheffield in there. Rush put on by Darren Franklin. The ball underthrown intended for Kevin Sprinkle. As we continue to check on our Dr. Pepper scoreboard, Oklahoma now by 17 over Kansas. Team blasted by 43 here in Waco last week, and Nebraska has the early lead and probably will get much more against Oregon State and Lincoln this afternoon. I'm not saying anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's safe. They're not Utah. They don't throw quite like Utah. That's true. That's very true. Uh, I thought the Utah game was a blowout. 17 to 20 points is a blowout. Maybe somebody else didn't think that. Really move it with no flag, and up the middle goes James Gray. Gary Joe Kenny and Daniel Morgan combining from the linebackers. You know, it's amazing for me to watch this game and just think of the flow that Texas Tech does not have. They just seem to be kind of sputtering. They'll run a pass play, they'll throw it short. They'll run a draw play, and it just doesn't seem to work. And all of a sudden, they get spurts of where they put five or six plays together and run them well, and all of a sudden, then they'll have a, a holding call. They just have not operated well so far. They're just not, just not smooth. Critical third down here, they need seven. With hand for Sheffield, he only got half of what he needed. The coverage was there by James Francis. And another three and out series for the Red Raider offense. Unable to get anything at all consistent cranked up today. Big credit to the Baylor defense. 
And you have got to get first down yardage on that play. When that when that wide out comes out there, he's got to get first down yardage, and he did not. Amy Simmons down to Miles again and popped hard. That is the third special teams play made by Brian Gerlick, number 97. So a battle of the punters so far here in the third quarter at Floyd Casey Stadium on Parents Weekend. Wake up. 23 to 7 Baylor midway in the third quarter and Dave it strikes me now that the Red Raiders are in the worst possible position because they have to play pass and catch in a comeback situation against the best defensive secondary in the nation. Absolutely and we talked about Baylor having that great secondary especially at the at the two safety positions and now it puts a lot more pressure on the tech team to come back. But I don't think I would abandon right now. I don't think I would abandon their offensive philosophy even though it's getting late. They're down two touchdowns. They still have eight minutes left in this third quarter. Held one rock by a nice cutback. And he'll be very close to a first down. That looked like a nice 11 yard pickup. Elford Dubisky running down at the 35. They have just controlled. Baylor has just controlled the tempo of the football game. They've been able to catch Tech in the defenses that they want. They've been able to drop the else has cut back and run the ball exceptionally well today. They have just controlled it. It's, it's almost as if it catches a team off guard. We expect one thing and have to react to the other team. And look at that already 22 carries for Raphael. The junior from Lawton, Oklahoma. In motion, Reggie Miller. Gable looking long. Secondary. It's probably 30, 40 yards from the line of scrimmage. Well, in the balance is a 65 yard catch and run play by Steve Stutzman. And possibly his first touchdown of the year, but let's see. That may be clip. Illegal block. Illegal block. Oh boy. And all we're talking about here is possibly the game if they oh had gone up 30 to 7. Yeah. Let's see if we can possibly see this illegal block. Now there, Stutzman looks that ball right in. Gosh, right here, it avoids that tackle. That's just as well as you can do it. Now right in here is that block. Perhaps we can see it right there. In the back of the picture, you see the illegal block. And now they change their mind. Oh boy. How about that? It is a touchdown. <laughs> well, I guess you can win an argument with your back every now and then. Well, you know, it, it looked on the replay. Obviously, you couldn't see any numbers, and obviously, also, Spike Dykes is curious. It looked like a flash of red and white behind a flash of green, which would mean if there were anything illegal, it would be uh, the Texas Tech player initiating a contact, which is not illegal because he was a defender. And evidently, that's what they decided. I'm glad you explained that because I didn't understand. I saw an illegal block. I saw the call made. That's really a surprise call. 65 yards, and it stands for Stutzman, Jr. from Dangerfield. And the Bears will go for two, but not before a timeout. We would like to push that lead up to 24 points. Spike Dykes would still like an explanation. That's exactly what he wants. He wants an explanation as to what the call is. You can see there, he's quite upset. When you make a call like that, coaches. If that's the call, coaches most times will say, okay, they went over, they signaled the call, and then they wave it off. Obviously, one official overruled the other official. Well, we just wish we were better lip readers. <laughs> Well, he got his explanation. No doubt, not thrilled about it, but at least he got it. But I'll tell you this: he's a, he's a man of great composure. He really is. He doesn't let things rattle him. He lets the young men out there play the football game, and he's he's not one. He's not a yeller and screamer. I think he was upset, and he had a right to be upset. He wanted an explanation of why the flag was roll off, was ruled off. Going for two after the timeout, Gable. And the passing set was crossed in motion. Going to be in front of broken up by Walker. 
Walker, the intended receiver, is Anderson. And after that pass interference call, Sammy Walker has made two fine plays. He certainly has. He got that early pass interference call, but that saved a touchdown, held him to a field goal. And then he's just come back and just made a play there. But let's take a look back at that touchdown, see if we can see that action again from a little bit deeper. Now they're going to see the pass over the middle of the Stutzman. He's going to break a tackle with a stiff arm. Good play right here. Now let's see if we can see that call in the back of our screen right there. Well, I really couldn't. It was, to me, it's a little bit inconclusive. This didn't have the angle that you needed to make that call, but one official called an illegal block. The other one turned around and overruled it. So that's the way it stands right now. I think I'm short end of a 29 to 7. So after the unsuccessful try for two, 22 point margin, which is right at what the last 16 have been seven. decided by on the end 22 points. It's all over now. That's Lafayette, 40 to 7 to find out the number one in Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Jeff Lyman is going to have a sore right instep. This is Dudley McAfee, the best kick of the day, five yards deep. Don't forget, Dave and I will be selecting the Coors player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast, so please stay with us, and it will be awfully hard to pick against Grant Taft's quarterback, Brad Gable through two and a half quarters today. Well, one of the things that Taft, of course, told us was that he had to go downfield. They had dropped so many passes back there to Murray. Murray had 16 catches. His best wide receiver had five or six catches coming into this game, and today he has found that long game. Surprisingly, against an excellent, well, I say a, a good secondary of this Texas Tech, a young secondary, but they had to exploit it, and they have exploited it. Well, and that's the key word, young, all sophomores. Yeah, very much so. They came in this with four sophomores. We talked in the previous game about them having a help wanted sign back there, and they really did. Retaining play action, looking for Clifton Winston, through his hands, and another one he just can't afford to have, trying to play 22-point catch, catch up. Well, anytime you're down, anytime you're down like this, you have got to change your game plan. Now it before when they were down just two touchdowns to the 16 points, it, the complexion of the game was, well, don't abandon everything. We still had eight, there were still eight minutes left in the uh, football game, but now being down what they are now by 22 points, the entire complexion of the football game changes. Now it's pass and catch game. Anthony Lynn back in for Gray. I got pick up with a couple. James Francis, his brother Ron Francis, now a starter again for the Dallas Cowboys second year. At 15 extra pounds of muscle, very evident in, in the style of tackling that he's used today. He just uses those arms. They're strong enough to bring almost anybody down. It's interesting looking at him, and as I said, he's a skinny 250-pound linebacker. To see that he hasn't really lost any speed, that's quite a tricky for him. Well, we've been saying it all day. Another good third down for the Red Raiders. Rodney Blackshear does not have the first. They get the completion, but not on the spot that they needed on the field. And Rattan is turned away again. So Jamie Simmons from his own 15-yard line. This is the best part of the day. Perfect spiral, and it turns over to little Lee Miles. Ankle tackled as he went backward at his 17. Michael Briscoe, number 82, with the stop. Still 29-7 here. We gave you the Notre Dame final. Duke has taken the lead at, Cle uh, at home against Clemson. Can you believe that? That would be an absolute shock. That would be an absolute shock because Duke does not have the football team that number seven Clemson has. And look at the Alabama Vanderbilt score, 20 to seven in the fourth quarter. Big schedule on the Southwest Conference slate as well today. And here we have that much time to go in the third quarter. Baylor trying to even their record at two and two. Texas Tech came in three and zero. Oh. Almost never in Red Raider history has a team gone 4-0. Last time it happened in 1976 when they went 10-1. New quarterback is in. Matt Gable gets the rest. And Ed Lovell 
The senior one year letterman from Lamarck is in and on the option he got popped by Marcus Washington and Matt Wingo. Lovell's numbers this year he played the whole game last year at Lubbock where they were beaten 36 to 6 Gable had, a, had an ankle problem didn't get any activity and that was the main reason the Bears now feel that they were held to that two pulling rushing yard. Also in with Lovell in the backfield Lincoln Coleman is going to tail back and Eric Gillstrap the new fullback. Here's Coleman. Talk about launching. That's exactly <laughs> what he did. He launched himself. He must have been about four to five feet in the air. Now watch right here. Get up in the air. Hits on the defender. Defender had good position on that, and, and really Coleman just launches himself over. And it's going to bring up about a third down and maybe a foot. Lincoln Coleman, we said, transferred from Notre Dame. Lou Holt said he would have been a starter for their national champions last year had he stayed. That's how good he is. And he's a backup in the game. Tracy Saul has it for the Red Raiders at the 30. And they might now finally have the break they've been looking for. What coaches teach you to do is put your helmet on the ball when you tackle. And this is a helmet on the ball. You'll see right there. See that flash? Might have been Walker coming in there. One of the, all I saw was a five. Might have been Wingo or Walker. But someone came in there, put their helmet right on the football, and popped that football out. And all of a sudden, we have, instead of a jubilant Baylor sideline with this nice lead that they have, we've got a little bit concerned. Baylor sideline. Only their second turnover. Lincoln Coleman victimized by perfect tackling the technique. Not really so much this play. No, no, that's, that's, that's the point I was trying to make with the helmet. This is Sheffield. He is inside the 30 to the 28. And Reggie Howard makes the tackle there. One of those converted defensive ends moved into the middle. When you put your helmet right on that football and you take a direct shot like that, I don't care if you're Superman, it's hard to hold on to that football because the ball just has a tendency just to bounce out. It was it was a picture perfect tackle. Good reaction back to the football by Saul to come up with it. It's really the first break that this Texas Tech team has had in this football game. And the whole second half is the one big must for Texas Tech, but underlying that now is this good of an opportunity. Now floats it for Travis Price. And it is broken up and incomplete at the goal line. Play made by Malcolm Frank, the right cornerback. And Price is still down. Price pulled this ball out and actually kept Frank from intercepting it. Sometimes you have to play defense. You can see he doesn't have a shoe on there. He may have twisted his ankle in his effort to break this pass off, but as he was coming down and cutting across there, he had to really play defensive back and to keep this interception. Frank had great position. You can see there's the shoe that came off. That's the foot that they're lifting up. Let's take, a, let's take another look at that. Perhaps we can see it. Here's Price. Now he goes across the middle and the ball right there. He's got him beat. Now watch what he has to do because Frank has great position. Right there he has to rip the ball out of the hands. I'll tell you, that's just as good a coverage as you can come down with. Boy, and Frank landed right on that foot, and yep. that's how the shoe came off. Watch, watch the tail end of this. You'll see that when Price is turning around, watch his, his left foot right there. You see the foot, the body come right down on that leg, and he's up walking. That's a good sign to see him. He's up walking with the help of a couple trainers. One of those freakish plays. Yeah. Estimate for me, how many injuries in football do you think are freak plays like that as opposed to... Uh, Probably two thirds, really. Yeah, because because you're, you're expecting the hits and things like that, but it's the ones that catch you off guard is when you really that's when you really get hurt. Third down to nine, and Rattan gets nowhere on the option, lost it. Baylor Bear say they have it, and they do. Darren Franklin is the man who caused the fumble, and there's Reggie Howard. Grant had one speed in his defense. He got it because there's no place for Rattan to go on this play. You can see right there, there's the ball that fumbles on out. But look how many green shirts are right around the football. There's a lot of Baylor Bears there. Interesting call. Third down. They go out here. They bump it up. and still Baylor by 22. 
What do you think? Maybe an indication of how much Spike Dykes respects the Baylor secondary running on third and seven? Well, that plus I think he tried to catch him off guard with that option play, but the speed, again, a great, uh, a great asset for Baylor to react to that play. There was just no place for him to go. And rambling for about six or seven. On first down was Coleman. Brought down by Marcus Washington. Well, we talked about Duke taking the lead. They hang on and they win in Durham. How about that? That is really a surprise. Clemson ranked seventh coming into that. That's got to be one of the bigger victories in Duke football. <laughs> Coleman again with his second straight series and should have the first. As they unpilot Charles Perry. Made the defensive stop. Vanderbilt coming back at home against Alabama. That's now fourth quarter. And also the ACC. Rice tied with Wake Forest. Those are two teams that are just a few points away apiece from perfect season so far. I think Rice has made a tremendous transition. You know, they had the longest losing streak in the country coming into this season. Beat SMU. Feel like they should have beaten Tulane and then lost to Southwestern Louisiana. And as you see, it is a Baylor first down. Well, this is the time, if you want to be an offensive football player, this is the time to be on the Baylor Bears. They can mix it up, they can run a pass. They can, when you're on first down, you can turn around and run a high nice safe pass. You can run the ball. You just control the tempo of the game and the clock is your biggest friend because it just keeps on ticking off. Gable only rested for that one series, and as you can see, his return as we near the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Lincoln Coley, Brian Adams High School in Dallas, and he's getting some big chunks on this possession. A nice clearing block by Eric Gilstrap before Matt Wingo made the tackle. You wonder how he wound up at Notre Dame. He grew up across the street from Tim Brown. That's a pretty effective recruiter, yes. I would think. I would say so. One to follow in his footsteps and all said, wait a minute, I'm going to come back home. Sprained an ankle last week, obviously looking pretty sharp physically today. Lincoln Coleman. He gained eight. Second and two. And one more time and maybe one and a half. Washington squeezed in from the left defensive end. You know, Dave, you talked about coming back home to Texas and the fact that he's, he's transferred here to, to Texas to Baylor. One of the things that really comes to mind right away is the effort that the Southwest Conference coaches put on keeping Texas football players in Texas this past season. Made a videotape, took it around, and they have kept a lot of the top players from going elsewhere. Spike Dykes was a major mover in that regard as well as the commissioner for the program. No first down here. Tripped up. By Charles Rowe was the ball carrier Coleman. Texas Tech defense holes with a minute 45 and counting. <laughs> it's like two run a, homer by the ball. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Two to one in the first inning. <laughs> two to one. How about then Rice Owls? Ten to seven over White Forest, and that's in the fourth quarter. Well, after a winless 88. They're that close to their second win already in 89. This will be a fair catch at the 13-yard line by Tracy Soul for Tech. And they now look at their final series going into that win with a minute 21 in the third quarter. And again, I, I keep on making mention about the team speed that Grant Teff and his staff guard tried to bring up. One of the reasons that they felt they had to come to more team speed is because they're going to play that run and shoot against Houston. And they felt that they just were outmanned last year. And they had to get better team speed. And it's been very effective for them, not only against the run and shoot, but it's been effective for them today against the Texas Victor. Wynn spilled the eye back, and he spilled by Greg Effinger. Coming off a broken leg last year. And backing up Santana Dotson, who was shaken up on the last series for Baylor. We'll wait for an indication on his status from the sideline. Well, talking about Houston and their run and shoot, that is next up for Baylor in the Astrodome next week. A thousand yards they're going for, huh? They think they can do it. You know, they, they almost would have done it last week if they hadn't had the conference record 236 yards in 10 weeks. It would have been well over 900. 
That's just unmarked territory they're talking about. Lynn driven out by Malcolm Frank as he reached the 20. I used to think if two teams got a thousand yards combined offense, that was a lot. I can't imagine one team. Used to be Houston would get 600 plus yards and it would be all on the ground in the veer and they'd come full yeah. circle now with it run and shoot him. Jack Pardee and last year's I remember what Baylor tried to do against him was drop eight DBs back and Weatherspoon had a big day run. Weatherspoon had over 200 yards rushing. He, he ripped three or four long. Third down and three. Raiders have had a whole stack of these all afternoon as they come up short again on the dive by Anthony Lynn. He was met head on by Gary Joe Kinney. And again, the Raiders feel like they have to do it on the ground against this Baylor secondary. But unable to. And as the third quarter winds down inside of 10 seconds, they again have to kick it away. But expect them to wait because they can turn around and kick with the wind in two more seconds. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to end it and try to kick with the wind and get Baylor deep in their own territory. So a Baylor dominated middle two periods and a 22 point lead back after these messages from your local station. This is Raycom Sports. With Dave Rowe, Dave Barnett back at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. 29 to 7 Baylor as we open the fourth quarter. It was 7 all after one. Baylor dominating the middle two periods. And there is Lee Miles back at his 32 awaiting the kick from Jamie Simmons. And I can tell you what the Baylor coaches are saying right now. No mistakes. Everybody concentrate. Keep the ball in tight. Running backs tuck it in. Nobody makes a mistake. Just don't. Just don't hurt yourself right now. We've got control of this football game. That's what they're on the sideline telling them. We've got control of this people. Miles lost it at the 35. And this may take some unpilot. I think it does because I don't believe the, the referee was able to see who came down with it. And they're going to give it to Texas Tech. Mike Derryberry is the man coming off the bottom of that pile with the ball. He makes a decision to catch this, and he's under a lot of traffic. You see how quickly he, just, he took his eyes off the ball, and you see how quickly he was hit. They come down with the football. There's the football right there, and you see Derryberry, 48, scrambling to get on it. Another big break for Texas Tech. That's not what you want to do. You want to be able to take that football, even if you fair catch it, run off two or three minutes off this clock and get it. Just use the clock to your advantage. And then James Gray, straight up the middle, still going, and finally Blackman drags him down at the 23-yard line with a first down carry on first down by James Gray. Back to the fumble punt. Give credit to Brian Dubisky for an intimidation as uh, he was bearing down on mine. And you yell when you come running down there, too. You yell as you come down. There's our third quarter stats as we look at the dominance again by Baylor. Look at that, 169 yards. Who would have thought not even 100 yards rushing for this Texas Tech team? 420 total yards. Tech averaging allowing only 450 games in the Gray dragged down by his jersey by Francis. And also Mike Welch from free safety. Coming into this game, the talk around the Red Raiders was about the defensive improvement. Last year, one of the worst in the conference. This year, they had improved by about 114 total yards per game and about 10 points per game. The Bears have been able to roll them up today. Well, we talked about that Bears secondary. Last year, they led the nation with 117 yards allowed passing per game. This year, they're coming to this game with 54. Clifton Winston on the ground, pick up the three of four. Marcus Lowe from right defensive tackle, a transfer from Oklahoma, was there for the tackle on Winston, who has earned his way into the starting lineup after he started the season behind Lewis Sheffield at fullback. Second leading rusher for the Raiders each of the last two years. And this is what you call, if you're an offensive player, four down territory. 
You go for it all four times until you score. Third and three here. Ray on the pitch. Three-yard line, first and goal, Raiders. Every time you talk about James Gray, they talk about his ability to make people miss. And I want to tell you, there was a Baylor player right there to make that tackle, and somehow Gray dips that shoulder and makes a miss. Now watch right here. That's perfect position. Boom. He just You see the defender just kind of falling out there? Great. And there's another one. Gray just makes a miss. It's just an, an uncanny ability. It's not something that you can coach. He probably had it when he scored those seven touchdowns back in seventh grade. That was Daniel Morgan who missed. Gray bounced at the one foot line this time and then over, but they had already called his progress down. And then Rattan now getting the second down call from the sideline. This is just rumble, set up your blocks, put your shoulder down there, and just try to slice in. You can see a great picture there. He did bounce right about on the one-yard line. Good call there. They're only three or four inches from the touchdown. And if they get that, they've got some hope with 12.20 to go on the sneak with him. No indication yet. Well, they're just going to have to unpile this because I think he's about two yards in the end zone. He is in. He had to be in. <laughs> there was nobody left out on the green. Now what you do is Spike Dykes, you see that signal right there, go for two. Because two will put them down by 14 points. Watch the line surge here. This is what you do in a short yardage situation like this. You get somebody to go up and over. You get somebody just to quarterback sneak. If you can't make two or three inches on a play, you don't deserve to be out on that football field. Jason Rattan's first rushing touchdown of his collegiate career. And they quickly get Rodney Blackshear in for Shane Sears, who is in as a blocking back. Blackshear is wide to the left. Play action with a fake of Ray. Rattan in the end zone. And they got the two-point conversion. And that may have been Rattan's best pass of the day. Tremendous pressure. Didn't fool the Baylor team. They put pressure on Rattan. He threw it up and sprinkled. It was about a 6'5", 250-pound target. You'll see the pressure that Rattan is under right there. See the defenders? Watch Sprinkles. Uses all that 6'5", to shield that defensive back. Go up high. Looks the ball in. Good concentration comes down. And all of a sudden, what was a 22-point lead has withered to now two touchdowns. And we've got just about the entire fourth quarter to go. 12-15 remaining. Still Baylor by 14. Judge not quite as happy as he was now. 29 to 15. And the Raiders will make Baylor start at their own 20-yard line. Rupert Taylor downing it in the end zone. Now let's look at our shift permanent storyline again. Four Raider turnovers for 16 Baylor points, the biggest key in the day. Baylor with nearly 300 passing yards, two of them covering better than 65 yards, the big one 75 yards to Greg Anderson. And all of a sudden you see Gable come back in. Now the one thing he wants to do is to come in, take poise and control of this football game. You don't want to make mistakes in this situation. He wants to make Good solid first downs. If you're a Tech fan, what you want to do is hold them deep, make them punt it to you, because all of a sudden your offense has got some momentum. Rafael has returned after sitting out a couple of series. Charles Rowe with the stop as he reached the 25-yard line. And Rafael has had a pretty big day. Now 23 carries, 88 yards for him. Well, he made those yards on his own. And your coaches will tell you that when you don't get that backside pursuit and you allow the you overrun it and you allow that back to cut back on that ankle on that angle that really is what hurts you Pass in the but they keep it on the ground on second and four and Derry Berry is running down very near what he needed for the first which was the 30. The most important factor is that the clock continues to run he's going to be short Big play here. And four new Bears have checked in. Coleman, Gilstrap. Into the backfield. Murray checks out along with Raphael. The 
the two tight end set with Stutzman and Alonzo Pierce. And the leaning ability of Lincoln Coleman. They do pick up the first down. The difference on that play was the ability of Coleman to avoid that tackle. He got swiped at his legs. He kept his balance. Was able to pick up that first down. And that clock continues to tick down. Just to show you how long it is, this this series is going to start with 11 minutes, and you'll see the three plays. Even if they give it up in three plays, it'll take a lot of time off this. There's very little passing right now. And the Bears in a passing set, but they keep it on the ground. And David Mims has about six. A little 5'9 freshman from Dangerfield. Now what they're doing, Baylor is giving it to their eye back deeper in the field. Now see, he's getting way back here where he has that vision where he can see where the hole opens up. And Mims is that little water bug. That little, he just kind of jitters through there and just kind of sneaks through. Well, Monty Jones has had a big day, number 59. They love him blocking downfield. He is just, he's what you want to be. 6'1, 290 as an offensive guard. Uh. Flags flew as soon as the Bears came to the line of scrimmage. Somebody moved. That's about as fast as you can move. <laughs> they hadn't even gone into their, their three point stances yet. But both, both Jones and Tom Turnpaul and Bass in there, that's the, that's the solidness. Fast binder, of course, and Gray on the outside are good, solid tackles. But the real strength of this offensive line is in those two sophomore guards in the junior center and Mark Bass. A fairly penalty free game today. Most of the mistakes have been turnovers. Back now to second and nine. Gable with a rush bearing down will not quite hook up with Stutzman. That was almost an incredible over the shoulder catch against the. Secondary coverage of Saul and David McFarland. Watch Stutzman. Watch how close Gable is really on the mark. I mean, he's just throwing the, the great passes. Good reaction there by the secondary to come over. Break it up. That's what you want to do. Go between the hands. Don't chop across them, but go between the hands and pull the ball out. But that time, Gable, as he was standing back there, I mean, he could hear a roar coming on him. <laughs> There's no evidence at all of a sore elbow, which can't bother him until the Third down now. Again, all he can muster on the pass. And it is caught at the 24 by Reggie Miller. That was just amazing. For a team that, and I, I keep on feeling like I'm saying this being with repetition, but, but for a team that was unable to go downfield, all of a sudden they found their downfield game, their game this ball is carried 50 yards in the air, and it is right where it has to be. Not bad coverage, I mean, it's good coverage. Saul has got his right running man to man with him, but the ball is just perfectly thrown. Look at that. He is now passed. Everyone but Cody Carlson on the all time Written there by Sammy Walker and also Mike Derryberry. Boy, for a team trying to not only control the ball, but not let the Raiders any closer than they are, 14 points. That might have been the biggest play of the game. Oh, it absolutely was. Because if they give the ball up down there, if they don't drive out from that 20-yard line, they're going to give the ball to the strong wind. The wind is starting to pick up in Baylor's face. That's another thing. Get that ball 50 yards to the wind. And on the line. by Charles Perry and Stefan Weatherspoon. Bears now look at a third down and still six yards needed. And Spike Dykes has to have a defensive stop here. Yeah, he certainly does. And Gable needs a solid play here. Third down, you don't want to make a critical mistake. Throw that out pass and have it intercepted. So we'll look for, if he does pass, look for a solid pass, something that's a secure pass, something if it's missed, it'll just drop to the ground. Well, he's got three wide outs right now. Comes in motion with Miller. This is Raphael trying to juke his way down to the 15. Lost the ball. And again, they have to unpilot. And, and the Raiders got it. 
Oh, boy. You talked about that pass being the biggest play. This may be the biggest play. They're obviously in field goal position. Now you see what Tech has to do with the football. That's just, you just don't, you can't make mistakes like that. And those mental mistakes, those are the ones that haunt you. Charles Rowe, last man up from that pile, apparently with the recovery. And the Tech defense with its third takeaway here in the second half. Now, try and figure out what caused this fumble by Raphael here. Didn't look like it was the hit. And maybe it was by Matt Wingo coming up from behind. I think it was. It looked as if Wingo maybe hit the ball from the backside. But critical turnover. Just a critical turnover. Return from his 16-yard line. Down by 14. And Lynn got maybe one before Robert Jones drove him back. And that's the way to take the critical out of the turnover is to have your defense play well. You had expected maybe a, a long pass by Rattan on first down. There. Oh, I certainly did. I thought that you come back in that situation and you just throw one screamer out there, 30, 40 yards, hoping for a, a mismatch, somebody to slip, and, then, and that'll really that'll really juice you up. Tech is just elected to be conservative. They got a lot of time though left in the game. Well, this may be the long one. All day for Rattan over the middle and caught by Sprinkles in the first down as he flips to the 37. Mike Welch, the man that sent him head over heels. Boy, Welch got up. He was shaking his head. Quite a difference in size there. Welch at 197, and Sprinkles at 250. Here comes Welch. No fear in his heart. Boom. You can see him shaking the cobwebs out. Nice. Wanted to throw more to his tight ends. He's got three good ones, and so far today, he has been able to live up to that. This is the best day Sprinkles has had. They try Lynn behind the blocking of Odeorn for about three to the 39. Kinney, preseason all Southwest Conference middle linebacker. Dave and I will be selecting the course player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast, so stay with us with 6.45 to go. Well, we got some candidates again. But it's hard <laughs> to go when you look at the numbers of Brad Gable. It's hard really yeah. to look very hard anywhere else. Absolutely. Second down and seven, and the Raiders in a passing look go on play action. Rutan decides finally to run out of bounds by Blackman at the original line of scrimmage. So he lost three. You don't want to be an official holding the marker on the sideline, do you? Watch the tail end of this one. Rutan starts to turn up, and you'll see Blackman with that speed just comes up and just gives him a little bump and watch the official. Get out of the way. <laughs> good coverage here. Really good coverage. You see, they've got, they've got four men on two in that zone. Now third down and an absolutely must pick up a nine for Texas Tech. And incomplete, and they may rule out a fumble. No, now they say incomplete. It was thrown by Rattan on a straight line to the sideline and really could have been called either way. That's a surprise play to me. Uh, just the swing, the swing pass out. That's pretty close. Now it's not close to a fumble, I mean, uh, the lateral, but again, interesting call to not go downfield to swing that pass out, hoping that you're going to catch the blitz in the center and you get those linemen out in front. Miles is out and Greg Anderson watches this one back him up. All the way to the eighth. And a loss of one on his attempted return. Michael Briscoe for the special teams for the Red Raiders. Six minutes, seven seconds. The clock continues to help the Baylor Bears who lead by two touchdowns. You're in Waco. Aggies taking a week off from the Conference Wars, playing Southern Miss tonight, but right back at it at Lubbock, noon next Saturday. We hope you're with us for another in just a series of critical games for Texas Tech because right after that they will host Arkansas. Down by 29 to 15 here. Baylor backed up on their own seven yard line as Gable has to give to Eldwin Raphael and he leans for about four to the 11. 
and you can tell this is run play. If you're if you're down there on the line, you see how the offense is getting tighter. They're what they're doing is they're cutting down on their splits. That's a good indication that you're going to run the football. You're not you're not getting out in that wide stance where you're trying to pass block. Raphael again, stone wall, but he's able to push up to the 15. And he sets himself up with third and short. Call it about two and a half as the clock rolls inside of five and a half minutes. And of course, the Bears are in absolutely no hurry at all. Now, and when you have a quarterback like Gable coming up to the line, the first thing he wants to do is look in the end zone and make sure that that clock is ticked all the way down to two or three or four seconds when he snaps that ball. You want to use every second that you can. That's your ally right now. The clocks are in the end zone, so he can see it when he comes up to the line. Anderson and Miles are both wide to the right. Third and two. Still on the ground. Rafael squared his shoulders up like you're supposed to when you get to the line, but he didn't appear to get the first down because of Mike Derryberry's hit. Right. You want to see what it's like for an offensive guard? How would you like to be playing against John Turnpaul, 330 pounds? Boom comes over there and he just kind of wheels around and just, just lays on top of old Charles Perry there, number 74. Gets a lot of pins that way. <laughs> just, just, just spreads out. Well, he's, he's, you know, the interesting thing is that he is, he's got some good stamina. At 330 pounds, you'd think he would tire. He's played every play. And a low liner loaded up by Pete Rutter. Racing ball from the 42. The cutter has to bring him down. Rudder at the 23 yard line. The Raiders are in business. They did two things that they wanted to do on this series for Texas Tech. First of all, they stopped him. They got a low punt, which is a returnable punt. And you're right, he runs into his own man trying to set up a block here. Gets outside of the wall. And you see Rudder number one. That's the only person between him and a touchdown. Rudder does a nice job here. He's the safety on this play. He doesn't tackle him. Saul is down for a touchdown. Luckily, Rudder 6'3", 214. He can withstand a hit. Aaron Hooper, the man in motion. Hans Gray, he ran into his own man, but stayed on his feet, and he's down to the 17. Now time really critical because we're under four minutes to go. 3.52 and counting, and the Raiders need two touchdowns. But they've made it a game. They were down 29 to 7, could have quit. And instead, they got the touchdown by Rattan, the two point pass to Sprinkles, and now it's going to put even more heat on the Baylor defense. Rattan for Blackshear. something that's just a, it's almost a rule that you just don't do he looked off quickly looked over to the right but then he zeroed in on who he wanted you see him looking all the way and Frank reading the eyes of the quarterback just came over you see that's not even Frank's coverage over there that's Charles Rose coverage. Frank was playing the eyes of the quarterback his first pick off of the year and a huge one with 324 to go Still the Baylor Bears by 14, 324 remaining. That huge sigh of relief you just heard is from, what, 35,000 or so at Floyd Casey State. And Grant Taft led, led that cheer because he has to breathe a sigh of relief. They were coming down there, and really Frank read the eyes of the quarterback and just reacted over, and he has really changed the complexion of this football game. Now it's run out the clock time and enjoy it. Lincoln Coleman has checked back in, and he was the tailback on the carry there. Eldwin Raphael has done most of the work, and he's over the 100-yard mark, 28 carries for 103. Alabama does hold on to defeat Vanderbilt. Tennessee now 11 to nothing. They're up with an early safety. Now they've got another safety, and uh, so far upsetting number four, Auburn, and Nebraska now by two touchdowns against Oregon State. I can't remember the last time. One team has two safeties. Coleman, the stop and start move out of bounds, but now they say the clock will continue to roll. 
And Coleman oh may not get up for a while. Coleman took a good shot right in the head. Stop the clock for a second. You know, in fairness to Rattan on that play, what he did is he initially looked off. And what you, what you want a quarterback to do is to initially look off. He looked to his right. And that kind of that's supposed to draw the secondary, the safety over in that area. What happened is Frank didn't bite on that. And when he came back, then all of a sudden he zeroed in on who he was going to throw. Frank read it perfectly and went right to the ball and intercepted it. Coleman had a sprained ankle that cost him activity last week. Baylor's got some banged up running backs. 2.36 to go in the ball game. 29 to 15 Baylor. And if we get word, we'll pass it along on Lincoln Coleman. They're down at six and Gable looking to the sideline has his man and Greg Anderson backs out of bounds exactly where he needed to be for the first down to keep the Baylor time consuming drive going. This is just what you want to do. You want to get just enough of that first down. That wide receiver has to concentrate on getting to the flag and watch where he backs out of bounds. He's got about a yard. He backs right out. Make sure he gets that one foot down in bounds. That's the way you draw it on the chalkboard again. Everything has gone Baylor's way today. They just have, they have just played their best game of the season, obviously. I mean, very evidently. Yeah, it's overwhelming. And the Red Raiders headed to their first loss of the year. Three very impressive wins. That's for the first and third against Arizona and Oklahoma State. Rafael adding to his 103 yard total of that carry. Derry Berry with the stop. Now, I mentioned that Tex, uh, that uh, Baylor's got some banged up running backs. Anthony Ray, very highly recruited sophomore from Wharton, may be facing his fourth knee surgery. He, if he has to have surgery on his left knee, which he hurt as he scored last week, that'd be two on his left and two on his right. And Robert Strait, the all-time recruiting prize, maybe in all of Baylor football history, probably will be redshirted this year also after knee surgery. But they still got Elwin Raphael. And he keeps the clock rolling down to 143. It's almost an embarrassment of riches. Raphael, Coleman, if they ever get Ray and straight healthy. Red Raiders with the timeout. They will have one more remaining. One minute and 41 seconds to play. They trail it here in Waco. Third down and eight for Gable in the Baylor offense. David Mims is checked in. He's at a slot left, and Murray is the lone setback. Already a career passing day, and Gable adds to those totals with Murray, his top receiver on the year, bringing it up, but still not what they needed for the first down. And another Texas Tech timeout, their last one. They've used them all now. 128 to go. And the Baylor hunting situation with a 29 to 15 advantage. 29 to 15. Elsewhere, Miami has the early field goal as they play at Michigan State in the first quarter. On fourth down and four, Pete Rutter who had to make a touchdown saving tackle last time he kicked it away. This is Tracy Saw return, and he goes nowhere this time. Raiders take over with a minute and 18 seconds to go, and now they're looking for a miracle. I can't remember the last time I saw a Tech team play and only run 137 yards on almost 40 carries. Yeah, not when you're averaging four and five yards a carry. They just have not done what they had. They had five turnovers. That was one of the musts that we talked to Tech had to avoid. And they created five turnovers, turned the ball over. They have not run the ball successfully, and consequently, they have not played well on the right. And Charles Odeorn very alertly fell on it. It also would have been the sixth turnover by Texas Tech. Mark still rolling down near a minute. By the way, 347 passing yards unofficially from Brad Gable today. That's the fifth best day in Baylor history, only 40 yards off the School record for one day held by Buddy Humphrey from 31 years ago. Mm. And it is by 46 yards the best day that Brad Gable's ever had. 
talk about those people that he is passing on that on those rungs. Their defense looking for pass, so Anthony Lynn eats up a big chunk to the 28-yard line. This is hurry up time. You don't even want to huddle. You just want to get up on the ball. Try to run three or four plays. Call them as you come up to the line. They stop the clock now to set where they want to mark the ball with 28 seconds to go and an official's timeout. Well, time to make our selection. I think we've already done that, haven't it's we? It's kind of easy. <laughs> Pleased to announce that Brad Gable of Baylor is today's Coors player of the game. And what we've got in that for the afternoon, again, 347 passing yards, 16 of 26, and two big scores, 75 yards to Greg Anderson, 65 yards to Steve Stutzman. When you, can, when you compound that with 178 or so yards rushing, that shows the dominance. That's over 500 yards of offense. That's quite a day. I think that uh, Grant Tapp found everything that he wanted. He certainly found the downfield game today. On that ball long. Still on the ground, and Lynn gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 20 seconds to go. Now, interesting to look ahead. Tech back home against AM. We'll have that at noon on most of these same stations next Saturday. And next Saturday night, Baylor trying to avenge last year's loss to the Houston run and shoot, but they have to do it in the Astrodome. I'll give you a good picture. He's a happy young man, only a junior. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See how loving players are. <laughs> When you're ahead by 14, you love everybody. Well, if you're throwing for if you're throwing for that many yards, if I was an offensive lineman, I'd be secure. Rattan for Lynn, and before he even got out of bounds, whistles were blowing. That's because he knelt down when he caught it. So now 10 seconds remain. Baylor will improve to two and two, one and zero in the traditional conference opener. And the Raiders 0-1, and if you follow history, one more loss, and they're out of Cotton Bowl consideration. And 3-1 and their overall record. Five, four, three, two, On the last play of the game, Rattan not able to hook up with Richard Ross. And our final score at Fort Casey Stadium, here in Waco, the Baylor Bears 29, the Texas Tech Red Raiders 15. Today's game has been brought to you by Coors Extra Gold Draft. By Sitco. By Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. And by Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper Butlers. Next Saturday, join Raycom Sports and Entertainment as the games of the Southwest Conference continue. These same Texas Tech Red Raiders host the powerful Texas A&M Aggies. It's the best of the Southwest right here on Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Quality shows. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports.